Hare mai and welcome to New Zealand Elections in History. I'm Worley and today I'll cover the election of 1890. The election of 1890 was held on November the 27th and December 5th, 1890 to elect 74 members of the House of Representatives. This was a very historic election with it being the first election which involved party politics as well as the abolition of plural voting and the implementation of one man, one vote. As stated in my previous video, the 35 years between the last election I covered and this one was very tumultuous. Governments formed and fell, with political factions based less on ideology and more on provincial allegiances. Two major crises that occurred during this period was when war broke out yet again between Māori and the colonial government. From 1860 to 1866, the colonial government and its militia fought a series of bloody wars against Māori tribes in the Taranaki and Waikato regions. This war came about after several Māori tribes in those regions attempted Attempted to defy colonial rule. A long and bloody conflict ensued. In the Waikato War, 700 British soldiers and over a thousand Māori were killed. This conflict also saw many disgusting incidents where civilians, both Māori and European settlers, were massacred by opposing forces. The government punished Māori for rebelling by seizing land held by Māori, even taking land owned by Māori who did not oppose the government. The other big crisis of the day was the Long Depression, which was a worldwide price and economic recession beginning in 1873 and running until 1896. The depression was damaging to New Zealand and its economy, hurting New Zealand's agricultural sector in particular, which in turn hurt the country's export industry. Overall, there was a lowering of the standard of living and many settlers ended up leaving New Zealand. In 1877, Harry Atkinson became Premier for the fourth time after leading his faction of Conservative Independence to victory. In addition to being Premier several times, Harry Atkinson also was the Colonial Treasurer for over a decade. Known as a cautious and prudent manager of government finances, though distrusted by some for policies such as 1882 National Insurance Welfare Scheme and Leasehold Land Schemes, he also participated in the formation of voluntary military units to fight in the New Zealand wars. He was noted for his strong belief in the need of seizure of Māori land. Atkinson had been elected with the hope of ending the depression. However, his government struggled to fix many of the issues. During the three-year parliamentary term, there were several notable bills passed, the first being changes to electorates, with new seats drawn up, and the establishment of the Independent Electoral Commission, an independent crown entity set up by the New Zealand Parliament, responsible for the administration of parliamentary elections and referendums. Atkinson also passed several immigration reforms, including increasing the poll tax on Chinese immigrants and heavily restricting non-white immigration. The stress of the job, however, took a toll on the Premier's health, and by 1890, Atkinson was too ill to make speeches in the House. Atkinson also now faced a formidable opponent, Opposition MPs who held liberal, Georgist and populist and other radical ideas formed the first ever official political party in New Zealand, the Liberal Party. The Liberals were led by John Balance. Before I talk more about Balance, let me take a breath because this guy did a lot. Balance was born in County Antrim, Ireland. Immigrated with his wife to New Zealand in 1866 and setting up a newspaper business in Whanganui, becoming editor and owner of the Whanganui Herald. During the fighting with the Māori chief Tito Kowaru in 1867, Balance was involved in the raising of voluntary cavalry troops, in which he received a commission. He was later deprived of this owing to an appearance in the Herald of articles criticising the management of the campaign. He behaved well in the field and in spite of his dismissal was awarded the New Zealand medal. Following the conflict, Balance's status in Whanganui grew. He was respected for his management of the Herald, particularly his forthright and direct approach to reporting. He became increasingly involved in the affairs of the town, establishing a number of societies and associations. Sadly, in 1868, his wife Fanny died of illness, aged only 24. Two years later, however, he married Ellen Anderson, daughter of a Wellington architect, interested in national politics. In 1875, Balance entered Parliament, having won Rangatiki in a by-election. He campaigned on two major issues, the abolition of the, of the provinces widely regarded as incompetent, petty and obstructive, and the provision of free education. Balance soon made his presence felt in Wellington. The abolition of the provinces occurred in 1876 under Julius Vogel, after which Balance turned his attention to promoting closer land settlement, considered the main political issue of the day. In 1877, Balance entered the cabinet of Sir George Grey, a former governor who was now Premier. 
Gray's policies were not closely aligned with those of Balance, but Balance believed that he could nonetheless accomplish something worthwhile. He was Minister of Customs, Minister of Education, and later Colonial Treasurer. His appointment to the head of the Treasury was a surprise to most, giving a high office to a relative newcomer on the political stage. After re-election in 1884, Balance would serve in the cabinet of Robert Stout. He was Minister of Lands and Immigration, Minister of Defence, and Minister of Native Affairs. In his role as Minister of Lands, he encouraged intensive settlement of rural areas, aiming to increase the number of people leaving the cities to work on the land, which he believed was essential to increase the productivity and self-sufficiency. His system of state aided village settlements. Small holdings were leased by the Crown to farmers and money lent to them to make a beginning of building and cultivation. This was widely regarded as very successful. Unlike others in government at the time, Balance strongly supported the rights of Māori to retain the land they still had. Many other politicians of this time believed that acquisition of Māori land was essential for increasing settlement. He reduced military presence in these areas where strong tensions with Māori existed and made an attempt to familiarise himself with the Māori language and culture. Whew. Back to the election. Things weren't looking good for Atkinson. In addition to his illness, his government was extremely unpopular. Before the election, there was a string of protests and strikes over Atkinson's government's failures to deal with the recession. Just as the campaign started, Atkinson's health improved and he set about campaigning to keep his job. Going into election day, however, momentum and enthusiasm was with the opposition Liberals and their leader, John Balance, and his proven track record of being a high-performing government minister. And the winner was John Balance and the Liberals, winning 40 out of the 74 seats in Parliament and 55.6% of the popular vote. Harry Atkinson and his Conservative faction finished second, with 25 seats and 28.9% of the popular vote. The other nine seats had been won by independents. There was an unexpected drama at the end of the election which capped off a tumultuous political year. Premier Harry Atkinson, who despised the Liberals, tried to stay in office and didn't resign from the job of Premier until January 23rd, 1891. However, his last act of Premier was to appoint himself to the Parliament's upper house, the Legislative Council, along with six other Conservatives, in an attempt to block any radical bills that Balance may introduce to the lower house. John Balance was sworn in as Premier on the 24th of January 1891. Also of note to mention, in July 1865, New Zealand's capital and government moved from Auckland to Wellington. This was due to the South Island having a larger population than the North Island, thanks to the South Island Gold Rush. Shout out to Otago. Wellington at the bottom of the North Island was chosen as the new capital as it bridged the two islands. 